In a previous video I've shown you how you can use the grid framework to make a simple lights out post game. So what you do in this game is you click a switch and that switch and all adjacent switches flip their colors and your goal is to turn all the colors off. So in this video I want to show you how you can do the same thing with hex grids and we want to reuse as much code as we can. So to give you a short over overview of what we did last time, we have all these switches and each switch has a script called lights behavior. And we also have a global script called switch manager. Let's take a look at switch manager first. We have a delegate which passes the coordinates of the switch which we pressed and the grid which we want to use. And if we take a look at lights behavior, which is the script applied to each light, we have on material, off material, these are our materials, we have a state to track whether the switch is turned on or off. We have uh, the grid which we use and type of GF grid. So type of GF grid means we can use both rectangular grids and hexagonal grids in the same script. We also have some minor caching and in the way we set stuff up. In on enable we subscribe to the event and on in on disable we unsubscribe. We also have switch lights which just switches the material depending on the state and we have a on mouse's button which calls switch manager dot send signal and it passes the position of the current switch and the grid. And if we go back to a switch manager when we send send a signal it basically sends our event. So once the, the event has been sent, we go to on hit switch, which gets applied on all switches. Then we check if the grid which we use belongs to is the same as the grid or current light loses. And if not, obviously nothing happens. So if I press one of these, then connected grid is set to the, the rectangular grid. So all these in the hexagonal grid won't react. You can also have several rectangular grids and it will only pick the one which has been assigned to these switches. Now it won't, what we want to do is if the current light is adjacent to the switch we, we have pressed then we flip the state and then the switch lights and the color changes. So as you can see we have here a method which is called isAdjacent. It takes in the position of the current light we want and the switch we want to compare it and it gets applied obviously on the grid we use for comparing. So here's the tricky part. This adjacent is not a part of grid framework. It is not one of the methods it comes with. It is a method I've created just for this example and the reason I've put it in a separate method is because I want to keep this script universal. So no matter what type of grid I always use this script. So now let's take a look at how to write extension methods. As you can see, I have created a class, GF Grid Lights Example Extensions. You can call it whatever you want. And you can place it wherever you want. So I've placed it here, just for convenience. So the important part is, your class needs to be public and static. Now we can start writing the extension method. So let's just copy paste it. And the syntax is for extension methods always the same. We need public, we need static, and then the return type, then the name of the method we want to use, followed by this, and then the class we want to extend. So in our case we want to extend gfgrid, then the name which we want to use for that variable, and all the remaining arguments. So in our case vector free position, which is the position of the current light, and vector free reference, which is the position of the switch which we pressed. Now before I can go on, let me explain a few things. Usually I would do something like this, public, static, abstract, bool, and then I would write the same extension method. Instead of abstract I would write override, and if, instead of gfgrid I would write gfrectgrid. So in this case, this adjacent would be an abstract method, and we wouldn't have these either. So it would serve just as a template, and here would be the implementation for the specific grid type we want to use. Now in C sharp we can't we can't have that. 
It's simply a matter of language design. So a static method can never be abstract or virtual, so it can be only static. So that means we have to do our implementation for GF Grid. Fortunately, we can still work around this limitation, but it's not as nice, but it works just the same. So let me just make some preparation. Copy paste. So what we do is we run world to grid for position and reference, so we can get these coordinates in grid space, which is where we want to do our calculations. Now obviously GF grid is not a real class, it's an abstract class as I mentioned before. So what it means is we need we can only run this function on an instance of GF rectangular grid or hexagonal grid. Now we want the implementation to be different for both. So we can run a simple if then else. So if we go over it, if the grid.get type, which returns the exact type of our grid, so not just GF grid but the lowest possible. So if you imagine this hierarchy of grids, and then we have GF grid here, mono behavior up there, and GF rectangular grid here. So it returns the lowest. So if get type equals type of GF rect grid, then we return rect is adjacent and basically the same thing. And we also run a similar check for hexagonal grids. And we have a function hex is adjacent. And if nothing, just in case we can return false. Now obviously we need these functions now. So let's write our rectangular. I set it to private because we I could have set it to public, but we don't need it outside and it doesn't make sense, so let's just, just keep it pri private. And the same thing for hexagonal. Now, in the, in the previous video, I've explained all what goes into doing the check for rectangular grids, so I'll just copy paste that one as well. If you, want, if you want to know the details, how and why it works, you can look at look up the previous video. But for now I'll just go quickly over it. So we run is adjacent if this is an x coordinate is less or equal than 1. And I add a little for tolerance just in case of rounding errors. And I do the same for y. And so that would give me all these 9 squares. Now obviously I don't want the diagonal ones, so I need to check if it's diagonal. So if the difference in x coordinates is somewhere around 0, and the difference in y coordinates is somewhere around 0, and it's adjacent, then it's also diagonal, and we return if and we return whether it's adjacent and not diagonal. Now for hex grids, it's pretty similar as well. We start by creating a bool variable is neighbor and we set it to false for now. So what I want to do is if I have one of these slides I want all six around it. So all its neighbors. So neighbors to the top or bottom are pretty easy to find. All we need to do is make sure the difference in y coordinate is 1 or less. So it's basically 0 or 1 or minus 2. Uh, minus 1, sorry. So if mathf.eps of reference dot y minus minus position dot y less than, let's say, 1.1 for tolerance and we also need to make sure the same thing for x is 0 So less than 0 0.1. Again, just some 
minor tolerance. And when we set this neighbor to true. And don't forget curly brackets. And we also need else. So, if we don't catch these two, we need to catch these four. Now we have two different cases. So due to how the coordinate system works, in this column, the neighbors are directly left and right, or left and right and one unit up, if the column has an even coordinate. If the column has an odd coordinate, then left and right are these two, and one left and, wo and one down, or one right and one down, are these two. So we need to differentiate between odd and even, uh, odd and even columns. So we can run a simple if check. If math f round to int, so we get an integer. Reference dot x, again reference is our switch. Dot x modulo two. So if it's even, we get zero, and if it's odd, we get one. So in the even case, we want the, the we want the difference in x coordinate to be between minus one and one. So this way I have math f apps, and we want the difference in y coordinate to be zero between zero and minus one. So that's why I don't need I don't I mustn't have apps here. I take the real thing. So I take position y minus reference y less than zero point one and same thing greater than minus one point one. So again in the even case it's either here on the same level again herringbone pattern for coordinates or it's one coordinate above. And in that case we set this neighbor to true. And naturally we also need the odd case. So if the x coordinate is odd, first part is the same and here we switch the position of reference and position. So and instead of greater than minus one we have less than one. And then in the end we need to return return this neighbor and hopefully we get no compilation errors this time. So let's hit play. And it works. Now if we go back to Let's Behavior, we see that we get returned a Boolean value, which then determines if our light needs to get switched or not. So this way, by writing your own extension methods, you can extend the functionality of Grid Framework to suit the specific needs of your own game. And in this case, we can keep the, co the code very clean by putting the implementation in a separate file and we can reference the same method over and over again without having to write the logic every time anew. And most importantly, due to how inheritance in Grid Framework is done, you can write one method and use it in all your scripts and it for all your grids and it will automatically pick up the right implementation. Just by following this simple pattern. Write a generic extension method for GF Grid, then write specific implementations as private functions and reference them depending on the type in the actual extension method and use the return value as the return value of your of your extension method. This approach not only keeps the code cleaner, but in case you need to change an implementation, you only need to change it in one place and it will opt update all across all your scripts. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for future updates.